Random encounters while traveling is the pinnacle of old school Dungeons and Dragons. Good random encounters make the world feel alive and not just empty between cities and towns. The issues I've found is that it takes a lot to run random encounters, especially on a virtual tabletop. You need a map, you need tokens, you need a table to roll on, and most importantly, you need to remember to roll for the chance of an encounter happening. Automating all of this is extremely easy with Foundry VTT and a few modules, allowing you to, to quickly see if your party has rolled an encounter, pulling up your notes on the encounter, switching the scene to the battle map, and the ease of bringing tokens onto the scene. This allows you, the DM, to easily flow from scene to scene without much downtime, allowing you to focus on honing your craft and telling stories. So let's get started. The modules we will be using today are Monk's Active Tile Triggers, Monk's Enhanced Journal, and Better Roll Table. The first thing we will need is our battle maps that our encounter will be taking place on, which is a nice segue to the sponsor of the video, Mad Cartographer. The Mad Cartographer makes extremely beautiful, high quality, detailed maps. Every month, they release a collection of maps based on a main theme to their patrons. This month's theme is ocean based. From underseen locale to dark side extortion to a titan crossing the sea, this month is perfect for those looking to spice up their seafaring campaigns or even dipping their toes in the water of a pirate arc. Make sure to check them out. A link to their Patreon will be in the description below. The hard part of choosing our maps now over, let's get started with setting up our encounters. First, we will be setting up our random encounters. To do so, open up a new roll table. We'll be calling it Dragon's Landing Encounters. This is where our random encounters will live. If you click the clog, you can then set your preferred dice for the table. I like to use two dice for this. This gives me a range of numbers that are already weighted. The low and high numbers are less likely to happen, while the middle numbers are more likely to happen. For this example, I'll be using 2d6. Now with the table created, we need to fill it. We'll be creating journals for our encounters. Thanks to Monk's Enhanced Journal, we can make a journal with the subtype of encounter. These types of journals have multiple tabs. The description tab is exactly as it says, allowing you to put the description of the encounter in. This allows you to include non-combat encounters in your encounter table, so you can add a wandering trader, or if you need a reminder to keep the goblins ambushing the party hidden. The next is the monster tab. This is where the creatures of the encounter will live. When you drop a creature in, you can manually change the number to your liking. The best thing is that it also works with formulas, allowing you to randomize the number so every fight of this encounter will be random as well for more repeat ability. The Loot tab is where you can add items to the encounter as well. This is perfect for when your party finds a lost backpack or wagon full of goods and trade. The DC tab is where you put standard DCs such as Fjordian River or see the hidden goblin setting up an ambush. This has integration with another amongst modules, Token Bar, allowing you to actually request a roll based on the DC you set. The final tab is the Notes tab that only you, the GM, can see, allowing you to put in some GM notes. I don't find this all that useful for encounters. Most of everything can be put in the description tab for what we are doing today. Now you'll want to set up a journal for each of your encounters that you want to run. Some examples might be a traveling merchant, an abandoned campsite, and your classical combat encounters. It's best to include encounters that appeal and fit into one of the three pillars of D&D combat, social, or exploration, and having a good balance of them on your roll table. With your encounters done, drag and drop them onto your table. Set them to the probability of your liking. I know 2 and 12 are the least likely to happen on a 2d6, so I might put the traveling merchant at either of those numbers as a more rare encounter. While 6 through 8 are more likely to happen, and I'll put the bad end campsite in one of those. Once your table is done, it is time to set up automation. This works best with a region map and a party token, but I'll go over a way to set this up without either of those. First, we want to make a new tile. We want the graphic to match up with the grid style. You can do this by selecting a hexagon image to the tile if you're using hexagons. Now we want to set how often the tile will trigger. We do this by using the scroll bar at the bottom. An easy way to know what percent to set it at is to remember each face of a d20 is 5%. So if an encounter was happening on an 18+, then it'll be a 15% chance to happen due to three faces. 
The great thing about this is you can then have more dangerous locale have a higher chance of a random encounter happening. So, setting the chance to 15%, we want to add our actions. The first action we want to add is to the pause game action. This will pause the game once it is triggered. The next we want is to pop up notification using the notification action. I put you found a random encounter as the text in this action. We then want to roll on our random encounter table. We use the roll table action for this, so like in our roll table. Afterwards, we want to use a delay action of a couple seconds to allow the realization of an encounter is happening now. Then, add a change scene action, selecting the battle map scene. We then follow this with an open journal action. Here, the journal we want to open is the current collection, which is the far right button. This will open the journal of the encounter we rolled on. The final step is something you'll have to do manually. Go to the monster tab of the journal and click and drag this middle button to the battle map. This will then place all the monsters in the tab onto the battle map around the place that you selected. Also in this tab is a box to make it so that tokens placed are hidden, allowing those in ambush encounters. If you don't have a region map, then we'll need a few workarounds. This is due to the chance slider not working correctly with the on-click trigger. Hopefully it'll be fixed in the future. With that installed, you'll need a new actor. Just call it RE for short. Now make a tile, set it up to on-click, Add an action called request roll. Set RE as the token, request as a D20, and the DC as 18. The flavor text can be whatever you want. Set the roll mode to GM only. This makes it so only you, the GM, can see the roll. Then you'll want to click the bypass dialog and auto roll options. These make it so that it will bypass the dialogue and auto roll the request that you just made. Then set continue if to any past. Then just follow the exact same steps that I outlined before. This makes it so when you click on the tile, it'll auto roll. If it's 18 plus, it'll trigger everything else that follows. There you have it. Quick, easy, random encounters in Foundry VTT. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, be sure to subscribe. And if you want my takes on actually making random encounters, say so in the comments below. Once again, thanks to the Mad Cartographer for sponsoring this video with your maps.